Two boxes of strawberries, two dollars. You and I are going on a trip to Boston's age-old hay market. It's market day and I'm gonna teach you how to shop. Well, so even though I check out all the prices, this is where I know I'm gonna start shopping first. And we're going to meet some of the characters behind the scenes who make this Boston tradition possible. You know back up and you'll be uh, I'm already famous. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Then we'll take a trip at the Boston Public Market and show you around. And of course, we're gonna grab something to eat. This is the hay market. Every Friday and Saturday, vendors arrive to set up their tents and sell fruits and vegetables at competitive prices to the public. Rain, shine, snow, freezing cold, or heat wave does not matter. The vibe here is lively, with vendors constantly trying to grab your attention by yelling out the prices like, six lemons, six lemons, one dollar. Cherries, come on. Only two dollars a pound, taste, taste. Two boxes of strawberries, two dollars. And you'll hear some of the thickest Boston accents, while others have music going and enjoying what they do. One thing is for sure though, you can count on these vendors to be there just as they have been for the last 203 years. As I said, these vendors work hard and to explain that a little bit more is my buddy Charlie who runs a stand with his brother and he'll tell you what it takes to be a vendor at the Haymarket. Let's see, four limes for a dollar, four lemons for a dollar. Got a dollar for pineapples. So at the beginning here, you want to go through all the way down the line and see what the prices are, and then you buy everything on the way back. So now we're going to Charlie's stand. That's where I usually get all my vegetables. So even though I check out all the prices, this is where I know I'm going to start shopping first. What's up, man? What time do you wake up to be here every day? Or Midnight. every Friday and Saturday? Midnight. Midnight? Midnight. Okay. Yeah. And then where do you pick up the vegetables? What time? Charleston. Uh, Chelsea. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? 14 years. Okay. Every Friday, Saturday for 14 years. Yeah. So you grew up here? When it started? Yeah, yeah. 14, 16. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, yeah. All okay. right. This is the best place to go for vegetables and fruit. Charlie's stand. Five oranges for $2. That's good. The first open air markets in this part of Boston can be traced back as far as the 1600s. The Hay Market Association itself can be traced back to 1820. Most of the vendors back then were immigrants, mostly from Italy who lived in the North End. And you'll find that even today, these stands are still ran by a diverse mix of immigrants as well as locals. Now, the Hay Market has not always been looked at in good light. Prior to trash compactors being introduced, the hay market was kind of known for creating a mess, creating these giant mountains of garbage every single weekend, which were eyesores in the middle of the city. Though most of those problems have been solved and continue to be solved, you can still see some history of it if you just look down at the street, literally. These are the bronze cast figures of different items that you normally see at the hay market, like apples, bananas, baskets, combs, gloves, pizza, a lot of random garbage. However, many of these bronze art pieces were removed from the streets when the streets were repaved. So the next time you're in the hay market, make sure you take a look down and see which ones you can find. The hay market has some of the best priced produce in all the nation which is interesting considering that Boston is one of the most expensive cities in the nation, especially when you compare the produce to Whole Foods or the larger grocery stores in the area. Depending on the season, you might be able to get a box of Driscoll's organic strawberries only for a dollar. You'll see six oranges for $2, four apples for a dollar, four onions for a dollar, asparagus for a dollar, cilantro, big bunch of cilantro for a dollar, and a pound of tomatoes, for $1.50. They used to be a dollar, but you know, inflation. I know what you're thinking. How are these vendors able to sell these vegetables 
for pretty much nothing. Well, these vendors wake up so early in the morning and purchase these produce at wholesale prices from distributors up north, mostly in Chelsea. Drive to Blackstone Street, which is located between Government Center and the North End, and then sell it to the public. However, pretty much everyone has the same product. So everyone's trying to sell the same thing. So with so much competition, this drives the prices down, which is good for you. And that's what we call capitalism, baby. By the end of Saturday, these vendors can be giving away their produce for almost pennies on a dollar. Like I'm talking about 12 mangoes for $2. That's because they need to get rid of this product. They already purchased it, and now it's the end of the day and they still have it, so they need to get rid of it or they're losing money. So yes, you may think, well, let me just go at the end of Saturday to do my groceries and get everything for $5. Now that's a good idea, except for the fact that this is an open air market where everyone's choosing their vegetables and fruit. So when you're coming at the end of the day on Saturday, you're pretty much getting the last pick of the litter, or at least trying to find enough produce at good quality is like finding a needle in a haystack sometimes. So that's why I advise to go at noon on Friday. If you go at 8 a.m., you can see some vendors are still setting up, but I find that at 12, everyone's set up, ready to go. And at this market, cash is king. Quick tip, if you need an ATM, there's a Chase Bank located across the street in the North End. Now you do have to be careful when picking your fruit. These vegetables are very, very, very ripe sometimes. So if you don't know how to pick vegetables and fruit, make sure that you learn. Do you know how a good avocado feels or a good mango feels? If you're picking up broccoli and you see it turning yellow, you probably shouldn't take that. Also, at the exact same time, if it's too dark and you see something gooey on top of it, you shouldn't take that either. And, and that could be very small parts of it. And if you have any more questions about this, be sure to use your phone and call your mother. She knows the answers. And if you think that this is worth a full video, make sure you add a comment below. And now we're going to meet Boston's godfather of cheeses, Roy Fournier. He runs Harry's Cheeses, which is a small cheese shop that also sells meats, olives, crackers, basically anything you need for your charcuterie bro. Charcu charcuterie charcuterie board. I don't know if I said it right. Charcuterie. Let's just keep going though. And like I said, this shop is small. Like, <laughs> I don't even think six people can fit in this. But it's Roy's personality and international cheeses that brings locals coming back week after week like myself. <laughs> I told you I was down here for 47 years, 48 years. How many videos I've done? Really? You've been working here for 48 years? 48 years. 48 years. Damn. Put it this way. I, I started helping my father-in-law out before I got married. Father-in-law? My okay. father-in-law. I'm going on 48 years being married, so I know I was here at least 48 years. Started out just helping them out on Saturdays. Next thing you know, boom, here I am. Cool. And then what are the most popular cheeses that you sell right now? Uh, it's seasonal. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now it's feta cheese. I prefer. I prefer the sheep yeah. feta. I mean, I tell my customers, when it comes to feta, whatever you like. If you like the cow, go for it. I carry the sheep for a couple reasons. One of them is some people are lactose intolerant. Uh -huh. They can't handle regular cow. Oh, okay. The sheep they can handle, goat they can handle. Gotcha, gotcha. And then... Again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't like to tell <laughs> people, oh yeah, sheep is good for you. Then they turn around, they get sick, and they say, that, che that cheese guy told me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, what? It, which days are you open? Uh, Friday and Saturday. Okay. And you, you come in pretty early. Uh, yes, uh, Fridays I'm in here usually between 3.30 and 4 in the morning, same with Saturday. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Alright, yeah. well that'll do it. Next we'll stop at this place where I can get a lobster for $9 and make this amazing pasta. If you'd like me to share a recipe and how to cook this, definitely leave a comment below. 
This is where I get my fish in Boston from my man here. Uh, Abdul. Ha Abdul. Uh, How long have you been working here? Yes. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good. Right. Perfect. Shrimp and scallop is what you want to get here. That's what we get here. And the lobster. Lobster is nine dollars. How how many pounds or how much for a pound of shrimp? Eight dollars. Eight dollars for the shrimp. Now everyone's coming in now. It's working, it's working. If you're getting hungry, a great place to stop is actually the Boston Public Market. Sanji wanted to eat at Mo Rock and Fusion. It's so good. We should eat here. You want to have lunch here? Yeah. Okay. Franchi ordered the princess. Of course she did. Princess for the princess. Yeah. Which is Moroccan style chicken, Moroccan couscous, roasted beets, pineapple barbecue, and white garlicky sauce. I ordered the sultan which was the sweet lamb, yellow rice, jalapeno chickpeas, spicy harissa, and white garlicky sauce. Happy with my choice. Always good. All right, Sultan, here we go. I got this because of the lamb. Chickpeas, big fan of chickpeas. And I believe there's a garlicky sauce on here. Here we go. Awesome. It's got some kick to it. If you're if you're not into spicy, this is not the dish for you. But if you are, it's for you, which is also for me. So I like it. Garlicky sauce is very good. Spicy chickpeas as well. It's a good mix. It's a Moroccan version of Chipotle almost, but very, very good. So make sure you stop by, check it out. Of course we needed something sweet to top off the day. So what did we do? We went straight back into the public market. Here, if you want a little treat, it's our favorite mini cider donut. Mini apple cider donuts. Each one of these costs only one dollar. Cheers. Cheers. This is the Franchi's favorite. My favorite. Especially if you're able to get it fresh when it's warm, it's so good. It melts in your mouth. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos where we explore different cities. Thank you for watching and see you at our next video.